This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. Good day, everybody. We're going to take a look at the tropics. This edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Invest 94, what's left of the nor'easter, that affected much of the northeast and caused all sorts of problems. We'll see if that has any chance of developing in, out in the Atlantic and the rest of the Atlantic, for that matter. We're going to take a look at the pattern, since it's only appropriate, since I am putting the finishing touches on my winter weather outlook, which I hope to have out to you very shortly. We are going to look at the next couple weeks pattern and see if there's any chance of uh, snowstorms, cold air in North America. As always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. And question or comment down below, smash the like button if you like the video. And don't forget, there are timestamps down below if you wish to skip ahead. I will not be offended. Let's get right on into it. All right, taking a look at your tropical update quickly here. We have Invest 94 out here into the north central atlantic and it has about a 20 percent chance of developing its narrow window of opportunity is rapidly fading to become any sort of subtropical system that was the nor'easter that struck the northeast earlier this week and then we have another system uh coming off the coast of africa could become a cape verde storm and head towards the northwest and slowly recurving the rest of the tropics seem very quiet at the moment and uh Look at that trough across the east with a subtropical jet sinking pretty far to the south. It could lead to a plains, a north central plains snowstorm, and then potentially more snow up towards, do I dare say it, the northeast for later next week. I'll have more details in a couple minutes here. And here we go. We're taking a look at the tropical Gulf of Mexico. Look at this. It, it, there's not a cloud in the sky here in the western Gulf, but you get to the eastern Gulf, you got that stalled out frontal boundary. We do have to watch uh, the tail end of fronts this time of year because any persistent thunderstorms could develop into some sort of tropical system. But things are progressive enough here. I don't see that happening. We get to the rest of the Atlantic. Here we go. Plume of tropical moisture continuing out ahead of this front. Another front out here. Um, wow, look at this ITCZ, the intertropical convergence zone off the Cape Verdes here. We could have something to trying to develop uh, later next week out here. We'll have to watch it uh, going forward. All right, let's take a look at the tropical models and for North America as well. See if what's going to happen with the Vest 94 and see if we have anything else in the tropics or North America for that matter. There's that big cutoff low across eastern North America that's going to make your weekend really, really soggy here across the east. There's that d departing what's left of that nor'easter in Vest 94. We'll see if that becomes anything. It's pretty much a very big low pressure system. And we put this into motion. This is the euro, by the way. It pretty much conglomerates into this big area of low pressure. And across North America, we get a little bit of troughiness going on. So we'll see if we have any shots of cold air uh, later on in the segment here. And we put this into motion. Nothing out here in the tropics to speak of. We get into the CMC model. Look at this. There is the nor'easter pulling away. Cut off low. Very similar to the euro. Cuts off here Saturday, bringing very rainy conditions to the east and the northeast especially. There's what's left of that nor'easter. CMC is kind of really becoming it a little bit more tropical, subtropical in nature. So we'll have to watch it here. There is something forming down here potentially in the Cape Verde areas. That's why I've put that in the highlighted mention here on the tropical map. As you can see, it kind of gets pulled north while this system is getting blocked to the north and northeast. So whatever happens here to the remnants of this nor'easter will get shoved to the south. And look at that, it kind of eventually gets shoved to the north, and there's that system near the Cape Verde getting shoved toward the north as well. But there's that big blocking high. And across the east coast, there's that trough. And we kick this in. Nothing really of interest in the tropics. Let's get into the GFS model real quick. You see there's the departing nor'easter, Invest 94. And there's that big cutoff low in the east. So much blocking. Look at this. This is a classic pattern of uh, negative NAO index. Now, there's something forming in the tropics out in the Cape Verde Islands. We put that into motion. Might have some sort of system trying to develop as well as here. CMC is a little more pronounced, though. This is more of a generalized big, there you can see the comma head there, uh, over the central Atlantic. And it kind of meanders for days well into late next week. Something forming along the east coast. Definitely not tropical in nature, though. We'll have to see if that's some sort of nor'easter. All right, we're taking a look at the weather pattern here. Let's take a look at the whole North American continent. We'll start with the GFS here. It starts off uh, Friday. Take a look at this. We have that lower heights here in the southeast. That's very indicative of that cutoff low pressure. Ridging out west here. You can see it very pronounced. That's And look at that big blocking up here in eastern North America, northeastern North America. We put this into motion. Look at that, that big old low pressure system. Very, very, very well entrenched in the east. You have ridging continuing out west, although we do get a little bit of big troughiness out here. Trough off the east coast as well. This is heading into 
uh, Halloween. And then we head into next week. Look at that. We see a classic trough here really starting to dig this is pronouncing here across the northeast and look at this big ridge up here this is what you look for any potential east coast nor'easters you see this big blocking big ridge high pressure here in northwestern north america and that presses down here at the big trough and then you got all that blocking up here in greenland look at that that's the negative nao index with all of these higher heights up here positive heights and look at that that pattern just reinforces itself into the end of next week through november 5th now it's interesting you do have a system out here out west but the ridging is continuing here across the western central portion of the plains so troughiness continues let's get into the euro do we have the same sort of thing yes we do look at that ridging out west there's that trough in the east blocking ridge up here in Greenland and northeastern North America and troughiness out here in the Pacific. Well, let's see if this uh, pretty much agrees with the GFS and guess what it does. Look at this. By Tuesday of November 2nd, which is election day in the United States, look at this. We see a big blocking high up here in northwestern North America. That translates to big, big trough here in the east and big ridging up here in greenland put that into motion and look at that we continue with troughiness in the east look at that that's a very interesting blip here it's actually a little more than a blip at this point on the euro some sort of system will this be will this have any snow with it we'll, we'll have to investigate that and of course cmc model let's put this into motion over your weekend halloween there is the trough in the east Big ridging out west. It's even a little bit more pronounced here on the CMC model. Big ridging up here in Greenland. We put that into motion and there it is. There's that trough in the east. This sets us up for a November that will probably be cooler than average across portions of the east and warmer than average out west here. So an interesting start to your late fall season heading into eventually the middle part of November here. All right, taking a look at the three kilometer NAM high resolution future radar here. Put this into motion during the early morning hours of Friday. We have a lot of showers and even some embedded thunderstorms here. You see some of these heavier rains across the uh, hilltops of the Appalachians here and moisture streaming from the southeast here. And we put this into motion for this is about midday Friday into early afternoon hours. Finally, getting into Harrisburg State College, Erie, and some heavier embedded showers and thunder showers here across DC. And then we put this into motion as you get towards later in the day towards sunset. We finally start to get it into areas such as Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, maybe as far north as Binghamton and, of course, Buffalo here. And look at this. We have this streamer coming in here into south central New Jersey, Atlantic City, and up into Scranton area and Binghamton. This is during the early morning hours of Saturday here. Getting into some heavier rains into New York City, Hartford, Connecticut, and eventually here... Uh, once the sun's rising here into Albany, we get some heavier showers heading up into parts of New England here. Kind of clearing out throughout the day a little bit. We have some individual cells here trying to develop on the east side of this low pressure as it kind of pinwheels around here. And you see later in the day, Saturday, later in the evening and night, we get this resurgence of a low pressure redeveloping out here off the coastline and it brings in a slug of moisture and that's when new england will get most of its rain during the very early morning hours this quickly becomes almost like a nor'easter type storm look at this developing on the eastern tip of long island heading into rhode island here look at this heavy moisture here and it pinwheels into eastern new york and maybe a band gets as far west as uh binghamton uh, New York on early Saturday morning. It tries to, but it kind of pinwheels to the north, and that brings the heaviest rain into Maine. Well, let's take a look at uh, total precipitation amounts here. If we take uh, all the way through this event, go back to the northeast. Here we go. Look at this. This is the whole event here across the northeast. Your eyes are really drawn here to the central and northern Appalachians and into south central Pennsylvania, especially just west of Harrisburg here. We're getting into two and a half, three, four inches of rain. And these ridge tops here across western Virginia and west Virginia and parts of Maryland getting upwards of five and a half to much as seven inches here. This is crazy. 
and where the we're really focused that some of that orographic lift here. And then we get into uh, there's that area across New England that I spoke about. Once we get the secondary low that forms just south of Long Island here, it will push a slug of moisture especially late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, into parts of the Boston area, into Providence, Rhode Island, and over to Hartford, Connecticut. We'll get some of these heavier bands, and we could get anywhere from 2.5 as much as 4.5 inches of rain out of some of these bands. So where these do set up, we'll see the heaviest amount, and even some here in the eastern Catskills of New York State. All right, take a look at the GFS here. Here's that system in the east, these cutoff lows. Kind of trying to make an exit here to the northeast. Here's the next system diving across the northern Rockies. This is one we're going to watch for potential snowstorm in the plains. There's that secondary low development in the northeast, but as you can see, no snowfall. But here across, this is where we're going to watch. Nebraska, southwestern uh, Wyoming, northeastern Colorado. Put this into motion for Halloween. Halloween night, look at this. We start to get some snow. You know, this looks like some moderate snow breaking out here across central Nebraska all the way back to southwestern Wyoming. And look at that. We get into south central Nebraska for your Monday morning into early afternoon. And look at that, a burst of heavier snow continuing. But it quickly fades away as the system slowly weakens, head to the southeast. And then by Wednesday, it picks up a little bit of gulf moisture here and continues eastward. And look at this. We get some, we back this up just a few frames. This is really interesting because this is the first time a model's Really starting to show some sort of snowfall here. Oh, look at this. Uh, late Wednesday across parts of west and western and central Pennsylvania here, especially the higher elevations. Uh, the northern edge, edge of this uh, fringe of precipitation. And then look at this. Thursday morning, snowfall. Places like Binghamton, State College, will spare Scranton here. Even Albany, a rain and snow mix. So we'll have to watch this. This is a secondary low development out here along the North Carolina coast, and we get a stripe of snow. It looks like the higher elevations here as we head throughout the day on Thursday. Maybe elevations probably probably above like 1,600 feet getting the most out of this. And look at that, some moderate snow heading into western Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and eventually Maine. So this is really interesting, and it doesn't really form into a full closed-off nor'easter, but you do get the outer fringes here in the northeast trying to paint as picture of snow and look at that do i dare say that that almost looks like some lake effect snow this big trough on the east side of this ridge behind that departing storm so that is interesting and look at that it looks like the winds will really be howling here as that system pulls away from the northeast all right gfs snowfall map let's take a look here we'll put this into motion heading out there's that halloween storm we're getting into like two three inches here into central Nebraska, look at that. That pumps it up to six, seven, eight inches here across south central Nebraska here. So we'll have to watch this storm. This is interesting. And then we head throughout the week. There's that system in the northeast here, the northern fringe of that system. Again, that snowfall accumulation. Uh, anywhere from two to three inches, maybe isolated amounts, four inches. It's just south of the Altoona and Johnstown area. Look at that. Spreading even to places like Binghamton an inch or two. That's interesting. And look at some of the higher elevations of western Massachusetts, the Whites and the Berkshire Mountains, uh, especially the Poconos just east of Wilkes-Barre Scranton, Mount Pocono area up to the Catskills, anywhere from three to four inches. We'll actually zoom in on some of these locations here. Let's take a look at uh, the northeast here. There we go. Take a look throughout the week. Look at that. Heading on total snowfall amounts. Take this with a grain of salt. There's a lot of margin of error with this being so far out. But this is really interesting to see that we've got these snowfall totals. And of course, the higher elevations always get the more amounts, anywhere from 5, 6, 7 inches. But it is inter interesting to note here, even noting some valley locations getting an inch or two, probably be slushy and only accumulating on the grassy surfaces. And then western Massachusetts up through uh, New Hampshire and into Maine here. This is really interesting. We'll keep an eye on this. And if we head out into... Let's see, which one's going to give us the best shot of this? It is going to be probably... Can't get it perfect here. There we go. Let's, uh, there. So we head through that Halloween storm. There it is. We're getting the highest snowfall amounts here in south central Nebraska, anywhere from 2 to 5 inches through this band as the system heads out east of the Rockies by Monday morning. 
and taking a look at Derek Rensselaer from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. October 25th of this year, take a look at the beautiful fall foliage really kicking in. Look at that tree. It looks like it is on fire with that orangish and reddish tint to it. So nice capture there, Derek. Get out there and enjoy the fall foliage this time of year. It really is starting to explode with color. Thanks for that shot, Derek. And here we go, upper air pattern for North America. Subtropical jet continues to sink to the south, causing cooling temperatures across the southeast and a low pressure in the northeast that could go coastal uh, by Halloween morning. And then, of course, out west here, we got, especially across the cent north central plains, we have that, uh, sub uh, that big jet stream from the polar jet here, and this could lead to that plane snowstorm. And here we go, your TGIF across the northeast. We have some rainfall moving in, especially to southwestern Pennsylvania during the late morning, early afternoon hours. That propagates towards the northeast, towards Binghamton, Buffalo, New York City by about the time sunset, and then progresses on towards New England uh, during the overnight hours. So I've scaled back the rainfall totals a little bit, as most of the rainfall will tend to fall Friday night, especially across much of the northeast, and then New England's later Saturday into early Sunday. All right, TGIF here across the southeast. We have that front winding up low pressure across the western Appalachians that's dragging a cold front through Florida. In South Florida, we could have a stray severe strong thunderstorm in the Miami area. Um, but for the most part, it, by this point, the system will have lost a lot of its energy. So we will be ush ushering in a lot of cooler air behind the system. Look at this, 67 in Panama City, 66 in New Orleans. A cooler rain, showery behind that low up there. Look at that, 57 and 56 in Birmingham and Atlanta. Look at that, 59 in Nashville. This is really cool uh, for this time of year. And that will be feeling pretty fall-like here across the deep south. And taking a look at Saturday across the northeast, big old warm front as low pressure moves out of the Ohio Valley into the Appalachians. It's pushing that warm front northward. It's also pushing the heaviest precipitation, the axis of the heaviest precipitation northward. Uh, we'll find that axis of heaviest precipitation along the I-81 corridor of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania where we'll have the greatest lift throughout the day, especially between, say, the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. That's where a lion's share of the rain will be falling. Uh, temperatures, look at that, will be mainly in the 50s and nearing 60 and above towards the warm front over southeastern Pennsylvania and New York City area. But just shaping up to be quite a soggy Saturday here. So if you have outdoor plans, I'd probably advise not to get out there. If you do want to take a drive and look at the fall foliage, it's probably a good time to get some pictures, especially when it's raining. It actually brings the color out on the trees with the contrast of the darker sky. And for your Saturday, we take the front even further east here. And low pressure stalling, we have that upper level low holding behind the main low as that low pressure brings more rain to the northeast. That's not very good news, but here across the southeast, we're really drying out. Look at this, 83 in Miami. First time below 85 in a while, 74 in Tampa, 68 in Panama City. And look at that, upper 50s across Georgia, Alabama. And look at that, 66 all the way down to Charleston, so a lot cooler. And here we go, Sunday. Yeah, it's the day later in the day. You're starting to dread Monday already, but enjoy the first part of Sunday here. Cold front moving through upstate New York and Pennsylvania. Warm front pushing through New England here. We have temperatures on the tumble behind the front, but it's really not that much of a change. We go down to the 50s again, so we've pretty much been in the 50s, and 60s ahead of the front, 64 in New York, 67 in Atlantic City and D.C., 69 67 in Boston, so breaking out kind of a nice day here in Boston. No chance of rain. The rainfall actually occurs behind the front here Sunday. We'll have some lake enhancement as well. So there you have it to round out your weekend. Only 20 to 30% chance across the lakes and the Adirondacks and northern New England. And for your Sunday across the southeast, this is actually a very beautiful day. Now, it may be kind of cool for some of you, especially... Um, where it is upper 60s, right around 70. But look at this. This is really nice. Uh, many of us in the Northeast would really like this right about now. Uh, 66 in Nashville, 73 in Panama City, 78 in Tampa, and 82 in Miami. Get out there and enjoy. And there it is. Case of the Mondays. Yep, you guessed it. It's probably your best uh, weather day, so to speak, 
uh, wall-to-wall sunshine from Bangor all the way down to Pittsburgh. We have a cold front that will be knocking on the door late in the day, but that will hold off till after 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, approaching Buffalo and Erie. It will be tumbling through Toronto, your early high, about 53. But the precipitation will actually be behind the front, and we'll probably get in on the act of some showers in places like Erie and Buffalo, probably after about sunset. So you'll pretty much have a nice day across much of the Northeast here. So get out there and enjoy if you don't have to work. 63 in New York, 66 in Atlantic City, 65 in Boston, 57 in Binghamton. All sunny. And look at that, your uh, case of the Mondays across the Southeast. Well, if you have the day off, you won't. Look at that. You can get out there and enjoy. This is a very superb day. Picture, picture, perfect sunshine. Look at that, 84 in Houston, 76 in New Orleans, even 84 in Miami, 69, almost 70 in Atlanta. We're on the backside of high pressure and 70 in Birmingham. Get out there and enjoy again. And taking a look at the extended outlook from our hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna region of Upstate New York and Northeast Pennsylvania, Friday through Tuesday. Friday will have a, a lot of the rainfall will wait until it's closer to sunset onward to start. So you'll have some sunshine earlier in the day, increasing clouds, temperatures getting up into the mid-50s, low of cold start at 37. We might see up to a tenth of a quarter of an inch after sunset. Saturday, that transitions, of course, Friday night to Saturday, rainfall. A lot of the rainfall hopefully will occur earlier in the day, so hopefully we'll get some, a little bit of maybe uh, some drying later in the day, but don't count on it too much. Uh, we'll have rainfall totals between three quarters of an inch and one and one quarter inches. Sunday, we have maybe a chance of showers, but then Monday is your best day. It's sunny, it's 57 degrees, and Tuesday, partly sunny, 54. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. And we're going to be doing away with Hurricane Eastern shortly. I'm working on my winter weather outlook 2021-2022, so watch out for that shortly. Uh, give my Facebook page some love on social media, Facebook Media Mark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. Also, you can visit me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. And also, my website's MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. 